Before I went to prison for real estate fraud, I remember the first time somebody introduced me to a real estate deal that didn't feel right. Like I could just, I thought, oh, I would never get involved in that. And then as soon as I got involved in that, my perception changed. I started making excuses. So it was like, well, there's people doing worse things. Well, the, the government's doing worse things. Well, the banks are doing really bad things. So, and I think that that's a common thing with sin. At least it has been for me. When I make a wrong choice, I'm trying to justify it and I'm making excuses. And then I'm losing the spirit. And so I'm trying to depend on myself. And there's other things the world can offer that make you feel really good. Like there's power, there's money, there's, you know, attention, all of those things that make you feel important. But there's that emptiness inside. And then pretty soon I realize I'm losing that spiritual freedom. And that comes through integrity with yourself, trust with yourself. And so I had already put myself in bondage. So then I get into prison and you know, the only way to freedom for me is spiritual freedom, right? So I'm going to stay incarcerated. I am in, you know, behind <laughs> the wall. <laughs> I'm there and nobody's going to open the key and let me out. But the Savior can do that. In any circumstance, the Savior can do that. And that's very empowering to realize, you know, whatever it is that you're dealing with, you can go to the Savior. And when you follow these steps that he's clearly outlined in the scriptures, man, the reward is big. I was so free in prison by the end, I was like, I don't want to go back out there. <laughs> I live a very simple life. I have four t-shirts, a pair of shoes, nothing important. And, and yet I have everything because I know who I am. I have genuine connection and I feel so close to the Savior, so close to the Savior.